message you're about to listen to is by Rev. Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Centre. Remain blessed as you listen. For God was with you. He said, Our God anointed Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. What does that mean? That means that the presence of the Holy Spirit and powered with Jesus was a testament that God was with Jesus. Praise God. Now, if you turn to Acts of Apostles chapter number 1 and verse 8, turn in there. Because the same way God anointed Jesus Christ with Holy Ghost and with power is the same way he has given me and you, or you and I, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If he's giving you and I the Holy Spirit. Now look at that now. Acts 1 8. What does he say? He said, And ye shall receive what? Power. After that the word Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto what? The uttermost part of the earth. So you see something common between Acts 1 8 and Acts 10 38. Is that the presence of the Holy Ghost is the presence of power. Everybody say the presence of the Holy Ghost is the presence of power. The presence of the Holy Ghost is the presence of power. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost, even with power. Then you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is what? Come upon you. Hallelujah. So, the power of the Spirit is present when the Spirit and where the Spirit is present. The power of the Spirit is present when and where the Spirit is present. So, if you are a Christian and you are saying, do I have power or do I not have power? The answer to that question is tied to, do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you have the Holy Spirit? If you have the Holy Spirit, you have power. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have power. There was a song we got one time. We had a video, last video we had. In Yoruba, it goes, Agbara, 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 Ombe Ninumi, Agbara. It's a confession to about. If everybody had light, but you went to try to put on the bulb, you know, and no light comes on, what would you say? We don't have light, though, Abi. Is that what you say? Ah, uh, ah, uh, you know, that's what you say. But there's light. But it's not, the bulb is not coming on, the TV is not coming on, but there's light. Praise God. All right, let me give you another example. How many of you in your house, you have light and you have a generator? You have that. Good. Then how many of you, you have something called a changeover in your house? Okay, how many of you sometimes you have had that situation, that scenario, where there was light, but your changeover was still on gen? But there was light. Ah, and you're like, there's light. Wait, what's going on? What is going on? But when you find out, ah, oh, the changeover is on gen. When you went and you changed from gen to what? To what? To light, there was light. So the issue was not the absence of electricity. The issue was you needed to know what you needed to do to get the power present to become what? Manifested. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we, there is no believer that does not have power. There is no believer that does not have the Holy Spirit. But we have many believers that do not know how to bring manifested power, praise God, or manifest the power of God based on the power of God they've received. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, and from verse 1. Before we go on, can we put our hands together for Minister Poa or don't I? Just give me a big hand. Hallelujah. So as I'm preaching, he's doing a great job over there. Amen. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter one and chapter two and verse one. Can we read one to go? It says what? And I, brethren, uh huh. Yes, came not with what excellency of uh huh. Uh huh. Declaring unto you the testimony of God. Now, what did he say? Next verse. It says what? Uh huh. Save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Next verse. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much what trembling. Next verse. It says what? But in what? Now, he says, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. Now, that word demonstration there, you can actually call it manifestation. 
Amen. I don't start using Greek words here. Amen. All right. Manifestation. So that demonstration means that the power is present. But now we see the effects. Praise God. For example, now, if I told you, ah, the power of God is here. The power of God is here. So, yeah, he's here. Amen. But if we start praying and someone that was blind starts seeing, you see, eh? I go around you. You understand? Amen. If we lay hands on people and people are going on at the power, you say, ah, why are you pressing fall down? You understand? So, all of those things are demonstrations of the power of God or the manifestations of the power that is what? Present. We need to learn as believers how to bring about a manifestation of power that is what present. So I want to teach you how to do that. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right. Turn your Bibles to say Mark chapter 11. Mark 11. Present power to manifested power. Present power to manifested power. Hallelujah. Present power to manifested power. One day the Lord was talking to me because he was talking to me and he was teaching me something. He said this to me. He said electricity had been in the world from the time Adam was born. Uh, Adam was created. Electricity. Electricity. Do you know that? There was electricity in this world. But electricity was discovered. Glory to God. Less than 200 years ago. The discovery of something is not the creation of it. The discovery of something is when we got aware that it was present. Are you paying attention? So it was present, but not manifested. Glory to God. So what did they do? Man discovered electricity. Man discovered the law of electricity. Then man now discovered the law of transmitting the electricity. Such that now, everywhere, there is what? Electricity. So, the issue, when there was no light on the earth, no electricity manifested on the earth, who was responsible? Is it God? No. Who was the issue? Man. And the limitation of the knowledge of who? Of man. Are you seeing that? In the same way, wherever there is a limitation in the manifestation of the electricity of god the anointing of god the power of god on the earth the issue is not god the issue is what the limitation of the understanding of men glory to god are you with me so far Tayo, are you with me so far all right look at mark eleven twenty three. number one transmitting the power of god demonstrated power faith Faith. Faith. Mark eleven twenty three, 23 and verse 24. Can we read one, two, go? That whosoever shall say unto this one thing, be thou what? Removed. And be thou what? Cast into the sea. And shall not doubt where? In his heart. But shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever what? He said. Hey. Glory to God. So, what is the law of faith? The law of faith states that whosoever comes believing in his heart and confessing with his mouth, hallelujah, shall have what he says. God is not the one that determines what you get. Your faith determines what you get. That's what he says here. For verily I say unto that whosoever, everybody say whosoever. That means there is no favoritism. God is not saying it's not saying you can come, you cannot come. No, it says whosoever. Whosoever is what? Whosoever. Any Kenny in Yoruba, praise God. Whosoever in English. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Whoever I said. What this scripture tells us is number one. Faith speaks in two places. Faith speaks in your heart and faith speaks in your mouth. So, faith is effective when your heart and your mouth are saying the same thing. Glory to God. Did you hear what I said? Faith is effective when what? Your heart and your mouth are saying the same thing. How many of you have said things with your mouth, but inside your heart, you are not saying the same thing? Praise God. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. You know what I'm talking about. Somebody, maybe if you're married here, yeah, and your wife went to, and said, Ah, honey, I'm going to cook a fantastic food for you. And she cooks everything, and she serves it. Then you tasted it. 
salt was much maybe you know in it it didn't come out as a very nice but you look at all what your wife has gone through so when she asks you how does it taste you say my god my darling this is the best you've ever made oh i'm so i mean i mean the chef in a co is a go hotel cannot do ah, ah my god this is fantastic then you eat it again it's like my ah yo yo ah yo yo ah yo yo ah but you know you understand I mean, brothers in the house you understand what i'm saying some guys don't say your wife you can't say because your wife is present <laughs> hallelujah so you better say <laughs> glory you understand so your mouth is saying one thing but your heart is saying another in faith your heart and your mouth must align hallelujah so sometimes you find out that sometimes you say, ah, this person is saying the right things but their heart is not saying what their mouth is saying so he says, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he see shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. So we see that faith is in two places, in the heart and in the mouth. Praise God. So that means any faith that is faith must be in the heart, and we must express it with our words. Any faith that does not move your mouth will not move your mountain. Glory to God. Any faith that does not move your mouth will not move your mountain. Glory to God. Because the receptacles of, of God's power, your words are the vehicles of God's power. It will happen exactly how you say it. Say aloud, it will happen exactly how I say it. So for example, when you say, you say in the name of Jesus, I win in this area. Then you come out and saw in the natural, it didn't look as though you win or you won. Do you know what faith is? I said I won. Glory to God. So I won. So no matter what I see, it may not be immediate. It may not be today, but it is inevitable. Because I said it, there is no other verdict that is allowed. I won. Are you following what I'm saying? I said, are you following what I'm saying? There was a time my wife was pregnant. My wife was pregnant. Then, no, we are both medical people. So she was pregnant. Then she saw blood. She said, honey, I saw blood. If you're a medical person, what does blood in pregnancy? It's not miscarriage, it means. You are miscarried. Good. Do you know what? Because my wife, we are trained. The word miscarried didn't come out of both of us' mouths. Praise God. I said, eh. I said, you are fine in Jesus' name. Nothing is happening. I said, no weapon fashioned against you or the baby shall prosper. In the name of Jesus. It is well. Everything is fine. Everything. We never. Do, he didn't, do you understand? Because we know we are powerful people. Glory to God. There, there's authority in our words. So what we will not. We don't want to see. We don't want. We are not going to see it. Glory to God. So we better do everything. We went to do the scan. Everything is fine. I said, glory to God. Hallelujah. I have what I say. I cannot be denied. So he says here. He says, you shall believe in your heart what I mean. He says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou moved and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that whatsoever things he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. So that means that the paradigms of the manifestation of God's power is tied to your words. Your words. Your words. Look at him and say, ne don't be careless your word with your words. Your words represent you. Your words represent you. Turn to Romans chapter 10. The Bible is not a book of opinions. The Bible is an instruction manual revealing how God created all right you know um, how god created man created the world and the purpose for which he created him and it also shows you all right the principles all right on which the world this physical and the what the visible and invisible how he operates and how it, 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 it gets to uh, get to move so we see from scriptures faith is how the world was created and faith is how the world runs look at romans 10 and verse 8 can we read one to go it says what said it the word is what nigh thee so the word is not far from you so the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy what heart that is what the word of faith which we what we preach next verse it says what 
that if thou shalt what? Confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall what? Believe in thy heart. That God hath raised him from what? The dead. Thou shalt be what? So how are you saved? You believe with your heart, and you what? Confess with your mouth. So what you believe with your heart, and you confess with your mouth, is what? What you what? Handle with your hands. Amen. So, how does God... I want to say God. No, it's not God. It's God. Amen. All right. How does God get things to your hands? Praise God. How does he get it to your hands? First, he makes sure you hear it from his word. So, he first of all puts it in your heart. Then, when he puts it in your heart, he now gets to the point he gets you to agree with your mouth with what he has put where in your heart. So when there is an agreement between what is in your heart and what is in your mouth, then there will be a manifestation in your what? In your hands. That is how faith works. Amen. That is how faith works. The next verse of that Romans 10 verse 10 says, For with the heart man believeth unto what? Righteousness. But with the what? Mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. The heart, man believeth unto righteousness. So there is a heart, mouth component to faith. Heart, mouth component to faith. Hallelujah. Now let me show you an example of somebody that applied this in scripture. Saying Mark's gospel chapter 5 and verse 45. We call her the woman with the issue of blood. Praise God. Me, I call her the woman with great faith. Stop defining people by their issue start describing them by their faith praise god if we describe that woman with the issue of blood you know there's a perception you have when i describe her as a woman of faith there is another perception you have when you describe her with her issue you only see that she was what she was delivered of the issue that she had that's all you see but when you describe her by her faith you now begin to see how Glory to God. I thank God that she was delivered, but it is in the how I can what? Reproduce the same thing. Glory to God. In the how. Now see this. Pay attention. Everybody let us read one to go. It says what? And a certain woman, uh -huh, which had an issue of blood 12 years. Notice the Bible stated a problem. Clear. He didn't say she didn't have it. He said, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood. How many years? 12 years. 12 years. Hmm? Now, this was. It says what? And had suffered many things of what? Many physicians. And had spent all that she had. So that means the disease affected her finances. And had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Everyone, look at the next verse 27. Listen. Everybody read. He says what? When she had what? Heard of Jesus. What did she hear about Jesus? She must have heard how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with what? Holy Ghost and with power. Who was doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. For who was with him? God was with him. So she must have heard of the wonderful works of God through Christ. Is that clear? So she comes. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and did what? Touched his garment. She touched his garment. Next verse. Look at what happened. For she... Are you seeing this? Come on, how many of you can see it? For she what? Said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be old. Next verse. It now says, and straight away. Everybody straight away. The fountain of her blood was dried up, and she did what? Felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Now, go back to 45. Let us now see the sequence of the manifestation. Now, note something. Pastor, come. Praise God. Come. Now, praise God. I'm going to see this handsome young man here. Praise God. He's married. That's his wife. Don't claim him. Don't aspire to Maguire. Just say, hallelujah, handsome guy with glasses. Amen. Praise God. Now, listen. Now, let us imagine that this young man here is Jesus Christ, anointed with Holy Ghost and reward and power. So, everybody say, this is power here. All right? This is power here. Sorry, can you guys? All right? This is power here, right? Now, Pastor, come. 
No, stay. Ah, stay. It's your wife, I know. We are not kidnapping her. Amen. Glory to God. Now, so this is power here. Now, this is a woman. Let's look at this woman with the issue of blood. Now, what did this woman want? She needed healing. How was she going to get healing? She was going to get healing by what? By coming to the power of God. Is that correct? Talk to me. Is that correct? Good. So, what she needed was, the power is there. She wanted to plug into it. Huh? She wanted to plug into it because she said, if I plug into this power, I will be healed in my body. Are you paying attention? I will be healed where? In my body. Now, faith is how to plug into it. To get a manifestation. Now, notice. Jesus is anointed with power. So that means power was what? Present. But there were many people around Jesus around this time. Working with him. But they were not getting healed. You understand? Because it, though the power was present, the power was not what? Manifested. So they were troubling him. If, us, if you read downwards, let us read downwards. All right. Downwards. And Jesus immediately, listen, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned in about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? The next verse. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and seest thou who touched So at least people were touching Jesus. It was not the touch. Okay? It was not what? The touch. People were touching Jesus and nobody was getting healed. People were touching the power, but no power was being manifested. Until this woman came. The difference was that a touch was not ordinary. It was a touch of what? Of faith. And because it was a touch of faith, the power that was present became the power what manifested. Glory to God. The power became manifested because it was a touch of faith. Now, let us see. The Bible tells us something. How did that woman come to faith? The Bible says, number one, she says, when she had what? Heard of Jesus. Okay, go back there. All right. When she had what? Heard of Jesus. So what is number, this, this step number one? Step number one is what? The step number one is what? To hear. Many people come, oh God, help me, help me, change my life. First step is to hear. To what? To hear. Always give priority to hearing the words, to reading the words. It is from hearing that faith will come. Romans 10, 17 says, Therefore, faith cometh by what? Hearing. Everybody say hearing. Yes. Say faith. faith. Louder. Faith. faith. Thank you very much, pastors. Faith, faith. comes by hearing. Hearing. I don't know what you're going through. Oh, oh, oh see. On jail, see. And stop. That means you need provision. That means you need to hear that God provides. Glory to God. Because faith for God to provide for you will rise when you hear that God has provided for your neighbor. Are you following? And God has a track record of providing. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. Faith. So the first thing is you hear. Hallelujah. Now next thing, what happens after she heard? Huh? The next thing, go back there to that scripture, Mark 5. It says, when she heard of Jesus, praise God. Uh-huh. Next thing, what happened? When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and taught what? His garment. Next verse. For she said. Now, before she said, after she heard, the Bible says she touched his garment. It means that when she heard what they said about Jesus, she believed it. Is that correct? So that means after hearing, the next thing is what? Believe. Faith. Believe. That means you believe it. Believe it where? In your heart. So that means the second thing after hearing is what you hear, you believe it with your heart. You don't reject it. You don't rebel against it. You believe it. Amen. You hear you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You believe it. You hear that the power of God is inside you. You believe it. You hear that God will meet your needs. You believe it. Are you following what I'm saying? You hear that what? You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You believe it. You hear that your sins have been forgiven. You do what? You believe it. You believe it. Everybody say, I believe the word. Say it loud. I believe the word. I am a believer. 
You see, you are a believer. Your profession is to believe. You are a professional believer. Glory to God. You have been wired to believe. Glory to God. You don't know how to be unbelieving. Say, say it to me. I don't know. That I don't know how to be unbelieving. When it comes to the word. I am a believer. Factory fitted. Uh, say, I am a factory fitted believer. Believing the word is what I do. Exactly. So she believed. Now. The next thing she did after she believed was that she said, So, what you truly believe will be manifested in your words. Your words are the clearest revelation of what you believe. Your words. She said, She said, If I may touch, if I may touch, I will be healed. Many of you are going to be healed this morning. Hallelujah. Many of you are going to be delivered this morning. Many of you are going to be moved to the next level this morning. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. For she said, if I touch, I will be healed. Jesus didn't say be healed. No, she said, if I touch. So that means she wrote her own faith plan with God. She wrote her own flight plan with God. She designed it. She said, this is how I will be healed. He doesn't need to lay hands on me. I will lay hands on him. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. I will touch him. She was the first we have in scripture that got healed by touching Jesus. The first. Amen. The first. Faith will make you a trailblazer. Amen. Faith will make you to get done what has never been gotten done before. Faith. Glory to God. Then after she believed, she said. Then after she said, she acted what she said. So she said, I will touch. Then she touched. Glory to God. Amen. And after she touched, the last step was that she received. So what is the protocol and the process of faith? Number one, hear. Number two, Believe. Number three, say. Number four, act. Number five, receive. Glory to God. Let's say that again. Number one, hear. Number two, believe. Number three, say. Number four, act. Number five, exactly. Glory to God. And the thing is this. The first leads to the second. So if you hear, you will believe. If you believe, you will say. If you say it, you will do. If you do, you will receive. So it's one action. Glory to God. Say it with me. If I hear, I will believe. If I believe, I will say. If I say, I will do. If I do, I will receive. That's how manifestation is. Glory to God. Now, why is this very important? Why is this an important message? It's important because just as there are many people that are devoid of a better quality of life, because electricity has not been manifested where they live. Some people don't have a better quality of life because Wi-Fi is not in their home. Praise God. Guys, look at me. Look up. How many of you have heard of smart homes? How many of you have smart homes? Smart homes where... Everything, all your gadgets are connected to Wi-Fi. Even your gas cooker. You know, the problem is that if they hack your home, you're in trouble. Amen. But let's just go with the flow. Are you with me so far? <laughs> now, so you have Wi-Fi in your house. You can do all those kind of stuff. You want to you know, access the internet. and So your quality of life is better because there is something called Wi-Fi in your house. Is that correct? Is that correct? Now, it means that, imagine someone that has never known the internet does not know how to use it can you imagine that person's quality of life it means that if the person wants to pay money all right to someone they have to go to the bank to pay the money they don't know how to use apps they don't know how to do all the things that you have taken for granted it means their quality of life will be affected in some way praise god it is the same reason why you must know how to manifest the power of god and the thing about it, sister, it has nothing to do with whether you've been a good girl. No. 
It has nothing to do with whether you have been a good boy. No. It has everything to do with, are you in Christ Jesus? Do you have the Spirit of God? Are you born again? If you are born again, these possibilities are available to you. Are you ready for a manifestation? Rise up on your feet. Let us pray. You have just listened to a message by Rev. Dr. Femi Olale of Oikea Christian Center. For other messages, visit our website at www.oikeacc.org. Remain blessed.